off the cuff. All right. <coughs> so, uh, the uh, point of order is not upheld. Mar Honourable Marion Street, you're seeking a call. I am. Well, then go for it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Can I just note, I don't, uh, I don't wish to dwell on this too much in the short time I have, but I just, uh, I would like to note that, uh, as the previous speaker has said, words are incredibly important, mm. and the words on the page are very important. But sarcasm and dripping uh, bile and venom delivered against people who are not in this house to defend themselves <coughs> is not what one would call parliamentary behaviour. And I think that kind of, that kind of behaviour against people of great standing, let's just remember that just recently Dame Anne Salmond was made New Zealander of the Year. I did not hear the Attorney General object to that, and I think it was a very appropriate order to give her, a very appropriate award to give her. And to come into this house and use that style of, of venom to which we are accustomed to that from that member is beneath him and that patronising attitude that he takes does not advance the words on the page. To which I come, to which I come, Mr Chairman. I come to the words on the page because, Mr. S Mr Chairman, the words on the page are inadequate. And let me speak about this. I want to talk about, I want to talk about uh, SOP 205 in the Minister's name. And I want to draw the attention to a possible interpretation of SOP 205, which I do not believe the SOP intends or covers adequately. And it comes to the words on the page, Mr Finlayson. The words on the page say, the page I'm reading, which is printed in the Bill's Digest, says the area of the non-interference zone to which the activity relates, and we're talking about the banning of protest activity within, uh, within this non-interference zone of uh, structures or ships that, uh, to which the activity relates, in other words, those that are uh, working at oil exploration uh, and such activities. <clears throat> the area of the non-interference zone to which the activity relates, which may be up to 500 metres from any point on the outer edge of the structure or ship to which the activity relates, or if there is any equipment attached to the structure or ship, 500 metres from any point on the outer edge of the equipment. Now, Mr Speaker, given that the National Party is so well endowed with lawyers, I wonder if the Minister could address the issue of this non-interference uh, area of 500 metres, if, for example, Greenpeace, in the course of its lawful activity, uh, protesting against uh, oil or mineral exploration in the deep sea, were to pull up within 500 metres of a ship that was engaging in that activity, and the ship itself decided to breach the 500 metre limit and move towards Greenpeace in a threatening manner, as we have seen Japanese whaling ships do in the face of protests in, in the high seas. Then where is the minister's law and words on the page? Who is breaching the 500 metre limit in that instance? If they t try to provoke democratic and legitimate um, protesters into activities that they, uh, that they will not resile from. In other words, they have done what the law says and pull up within 500 metres of a ship that's carrying out this activity. And the ship then itself broaches that 500 metre limit. Then who is at fault? Who gets the $100,000 fine? Where does that responsibility lie? And why hasn't the minister got the words on the page right? He's got the, uh, the archbishop of words on the page sitting on, on his right hand. And uh, really, quite frankly, I would think, I would think, 
Cardinal something, Cardinal something, I might come to that at a later speech on another subject perhaps, Cardinal something. But however, on this matter, the man who sets himself up as the, as Mr. Chairman. Honourable Marion. Thank you. Who sets himself up as the one with the greatest knowledge of the words on the page should surely have counselled his junior colleague and said, I'm sorry, you haven't got the words on the page quite right. But in addition to that, that carelessness, that sloppiness of drafting, what we see from this, because the words on the page are not accurate, are not sufficient, we see the actual design of this SOP. I would have supported uh, Gareth Hughes' procedural motion earlier this evening, which was not allowed by the House, to have this SOP referred back to the Select Committee so that people could tease it out and see whether or not, whether or not it was appropriate. But this minister clearly didn't want public scrutiny of this. Because as Paul Buchanan said of the Prime Minister just last week, he said this behaviour might be appropriate when he was talking about the Prime Minister and, and his poor oversight of the GCSB. He uh, said order, this behaviour may be appropriate. Order, order, order. Now, now, members can use examples, but I just, I just need to say right at the start, we are actually... Uh, debating the Crown Minerals Permitting Bill, and, and we're not going to extend into other debates. Okay. Right, Honourable no, no, Marion Street. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and I wasn't intending to. I simply wanted to quote Paul Buchanan because he said, the Prime Minister's cavalier behaviour might be appropriate for the CEO of a private company, but it is not appropriate for the Prime Minister of a democratic nation. And I think this is the point that the Minister is missing with this SOP. He forgets, because he is being tutored by his colleagues, he is being tutored uh, by some who think that the private sector rules, that, and the private sector rules are okay, that it is adequate to put up a curtailing of legitimate democratic expression without taking it to the public for comment, without putting it through a select committee process where the public could make submissions, and bring it in through the side door because he had had a phone call from a company, or he might have had a phone call from a company that said, oh, by the way, we'll come and prospect and uh, drill for oil around your, your borders, in your um, economic zone, uh, if you make it easy for us. Because we've heard from our friends at Warner Brothers and we've heard from our friends at Sky City that this is how the New Zealand government does business. It's really just one private CEO talking to another private CEO. Well, if this junior minister thinks that this is the way to run a country, somebody needs to tell him that is not the case and that there are democratic principles at stake, there are democratic rights of protest that people have. Yes, there should be safety on the high seas. In that case, why doesn't this SOP morph into a piece of legislation that applies to every vessel on the high sea and not simply those who are going about their business of protesting legitimately in a difficult area? Of course, we don't want accidents at sea. We don't want Japanese whalers splitting protest boats in half. We don't want them threatening life. We do not want that kind of lack of safety on the high seas. But if it's good enough to bring this in for protest boats, Mr. Chairman, it should be good enough for every vessel on the high seas so that there should not be any tolerance of health and safety threats on the high seas. So, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that the Minister goes back and gets the words on the page right, tutored by his superior counsel, superior in so many ways, uh, Chris Finlayson, and he gets some advice about 
how to write this properly, to say what he means, mean what he says, and to get make sure that this is not simply an isolated exception, which could be something applied to every vessel on the high seas. This is a democratic country. We do prize our right to protest democratically. We do, uh, our democratic right to protest. We do guard that jealously. This is not a private company to, to, be, to have rules dictated by the CEO. This is a democratic country, and it should be run with that in mind. Catherine Dallahunty. Chair, tēnā koutou te whare. I'm delighted.